ですから。Uh, approval of the August 2nd, 2021 minutes. If everybody's reviewed them, could I have a motion to approve? So moved. And is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any changes or anything uh, against? Abstentions? Well, I know I wasn't around, but. All right, consideration of the meeting schedule. Um, what were the dates again, Mike? It's in the package. I may not have printed it. Put them on the screen. February 7th, May 2nd, August 1st, November 7th. All right, is everybody good with that? Yeah, I'm good. No problems, okay. And we will go with that. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and Mike. We take action on that, Bonnie. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Um, approval of the meeting schedule, a uh, motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. All right, all right, the ayes have it. Now we'll go to Chris and Michael. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, uh, and good afternoon, folks. Um, uh, we'll go quickly here, I think, as we do each meeting and catch up, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit on the, the bigger picture on uh, market themes and data. Uh, and then we'll we'll certainly uh, uh, plan on spending sufficient time to walk you through the performance of the fund and uh, uh, kind of how it's allocated as we ended the, the third quarter. Um, I think as folks as know and, and read, and, uh, and with my apologies to some of our earlier attendees, not to be too duplicative, but we'll get you through the highlights here as best we can. Uh, a couple of things weighing on investor sentiment more recently. Uh, and more acutely so, I would suggest, right? And some of the things you've read about are the Federal Reserve is starting to uh, evolve their policies. Remember all that stimulus they put into the system with the onset of the pandemic. Now they're starting to pull that away ever so gradually. Uh, and certainly that change in the way they're messaging it is something that investors are spending a lot of time on and attention to. And it's caused a little bit of friction and, and concern in the markets. Um, not all that dramatic as we'll see momentarily, but a little bit nonetheless. Uh, Washington continues to work its way through some gridlock on the policy front. Um, and that, of course, will, will always create a little bit of consternation for investors. And uh, we all know uh, 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 that we continue to kind of work our way through the, the, the health care situation as well. So that all kind of quells together um, in this idea that, that markets, uh, certainly in the fall, uh, as the third quarter came to an end, came under a little bit more pressure than they had uh, earlier in the year. Um, one of the things that we're talking to clients about, just in terms of the, uh, the, the corollary to that, though, and some of those concerns is the fact that uh, consumers uh, uh, enter the shopping season, uh, if they can find stuff on the shelves, or enter the shopping season and, and, and 2022 position pretty strong financially. So look at the exhibit that Mike's got up on the page there. You'll see in the lower left-hand corner of that page, just a couple of plots, household net worth, and household indebtedness. Uh, and you can see uh, almost in conjunction with, with the onset of the pandemic, uh, big improvements on both fronts. So we do think in a way, right, that strength from consumers, which we'll remember right in the US, they're about 70% of the economy, consumer activity, uh, might be at bridge to a, um, that next wave of economic momentum that, that, that might begin to come to fruition in, in 2022. Uh, and then the other thing and we, we always talk about with the committee, you'll remember, right, is just how kind of returns across the markets evolve through time. And you see in the lower right hand corner of the page, we've had a bit of a reversal back to some of those areas of the markets that worked particularly well at the onset of the pandemic. Things like the large cap companies in, in the US and, and the growth names, for example, and, and the like, 
all doing very well in the third quarter, at least on a relative basis. And that's a little bit of reversal from what we had earlier in the year. I think, as you all remember, right, you've got a diversified investment program and, and, and have got by design, right, uh, participation in uh, the markets, regardless of, of if one area is working, you know, particularly better than another. So it's not a, a, a wholesale concern, but something to be mindful. Of. Um, if we might could just turn to the returns page that we had up in the earlier meeting, I think it's two, two ahead of this one, just to give the, uh, the members uh, on the committee a little bit of perspective before we look at the portfolio. Uh, here it is. Thank you. Uh, you'll see here now. Remember, right? The Volunteer Fire Fund is uh, three quarters of it by design is invested in conservative fixed income, right? Going to give in the return objectives that you've set forth. And um, if you can scroll back, Mike, just to that previous page quickly. Just sorry, bear with me. I got to uh, oh. manage a, another aspect of the meeting here while we're going. There we go. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, just the visuals there. So you see there, right? We've highlighted for you with the circles there, the third quarter performance. And you see across the fixed income markets, which are all those areas that Mike's highlighting with the cursor, some pretty nominal returns, right? In the broadest sense, fixed income markets in the US were about flat in the third quarter. So that gives us a little bit of guidepost from a return standpoint expectation when we look at the numbers momentarily. The equity, domestic equity markets are the gray uh, bars in the center of the page. Again, you'll see there, right, other than large cap names in the US, most other segments of the global equity markets were actually a bit softer in the third quarter. Um, we've got some of the diversifying asset class returns there to the far right, which, which are not generally asset classes we use in this particular pool, as you know, um, given its conservatism. So a, a kind of a muted uh, uh, environment for capital market returns in the, um, in the third quarter. Let's pause there for a minute. Any questions from uh, committee members just on bigger picture things before we spend a minute or two on the, uh, the program itself? Yeah. It sounds like folks are okay. Again, just to interrupt me if, if not, or if you want to jump in. Um, if we could switch over, Mike, let's, uh, we could uh, maybe show the committee the configuration of the portfolio at the end of the third quarter. Here it is. Um, so as mentioned, right, uh, about three quarters of the portfolio by design is in, is in the more conservative areas of the market, the fixed income markets, and you see the allocations here at the end um, of the quarter, pretty close to target, right? There's a little bit of fluctuation just by virtue of market return uh, uh, differentials, but, but nothing for us to act on. Uh, in our estimate, I think it, uh, you know, you're in good, in good steed from an allocation perspective. Um, all of the portfolio mandates um, uh, are on uh, uh, our highest status, our maintained status from a manager research perspective. Uh, for those members who sat through the earlier meeting, remember Prudential had elevated with a couple of their strategies to discuss but uh, not implicated in, in, in the volunteer firefighter program. These are different, uh, different strategies and different teams. Um, so I think we're in good working order uh, across, the, uh, uh, across the portfolios and, 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 and no particular concerns um, from our standpoint in terms of the way that the uh, funds are allocated right now, nor the managers. Uh, and then if we could, Mike, um, just jump to the return page um, so a flat quarter, you see there actually on our, on our kind of uh, 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 me measurement system, uh, exactly flat, a little bit behind the benchmark this quarter uh, for the first time in a while, but nothing that's all that concerning. Uh, each of the fixed income managers was just uh, literally a touch behind the um, in the quarter, but they've certainly been kind of up to task longer term when you look at the longer dated numbers. So year to date, just for the record through September up 8.4%, um, excuse me, 3.4%, I'm sorry, uh, that's my fault. Uh, one year number just shy of 10% uh, and nicely ahead of the benchmark. And then you see the longer dated their numbers, kind of what I think you've grown accustomed to on, on both a, an absolute and a relative basis. So. I think as we always talk about, right, um, 
given where interest rates have been for uh, uh, the lion's share of this fund's existence, um, and given that you know, 75% of the asset base is in very conservative fixed income, <clears throat> net of fees that you'd be annualizing uh, and uh, you know, a full six and a half percent, I, I think we take that all day, right? So it's been, I think, a good experience from a return standpoint. So uh, 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 Bonnie, I'll come back to you, I think is acting chair, right? And I don't have any other um, questions. Well, the mayor, the mayor is back on, right? Oh, Mike, okay. Okay, then I'll, I'll defer to the mayor or whomever and uh, uh, no nope, other. I guess, I think he's off again. Nope. Okay, yep, go ahead. Anybody have any questions or anything for Chris? Comments, anything? All right, great. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Now, do we have somebody from Prudential? Uh, Pam cannot be with us. Oh, all right. Okay. And then anybody have anything under no, uh, old business to bring up? Nope. And under new business, and I don't know, Mike, if this had been talked about at previous meetings, but whether people want to continue with Zoom meetings or would they rather do it in person? No, the last meeting was in August. So it, it depends on what you guys want to do. Can you run them in person with the option of joining via Zoom? No, it's one or the other. Yeah, technologically, we don't have, it's, it's really rough to do it both ways. Anybody have a preference or you don't care? Or? I don't, I'm open. I'm open, I'm open also. Yeah, no strong preference. All right, somebody has to be the deciding factor. I can do it, Bonnie. Just because we, yeah, I jumped on. Just because we told Chris at the OPEB we would do in person. You know, if we're going to do these meetings three in a row, OPEB pension and, uh, firefighters we should probably have a uniform okay uh, want to do in person fine by me sounds good yeah i'm good with in person i'm good and that's i'm good okay mayor you can take over okay where are we at? <laughs> Motion to adjourn? Is yeah. That's where it. we are? Um, yeah. if, if that's where we are, I, I'm sorry, I do have a question. Mike, and I apologize, I missed the start of the meeting. Have we done our annual statement uh, for added the good years for this past year and done a special allocation for this year? Those are done, uh, Chris. We do have uh, an, an added twist this year and that there's a new uh, accounting policy for fiduciary funds, which would, uh, this plan falls under that. So we are, we're in the midst of our annual audit, uh, preparing that report. And there's some new disclosures and I believe a schedule that have to be included in the audit report this year. So that's, we're working with the, the auditors to make sure, um, you know, we want to understand exactly what needs to be disclosed and, and, make sure the numbers are all in order before we issue those state those statements to the participants. So, but we believe internally that those are all set. We're just waiting for a confirmation from the, uh, uh, from the auditors. And Mike, so what set my expectations, how long would you expect it to be? And I, I think normally it's a, it's a July distribution. So I have received a couple of questions from guys recently. Well, normally in the sense that we have not had a special allocation um, in the last three years, I believe. But so that makes this year a little bit different from that regard. But uh, in terms of setting expectations, uh, I would hope, uh, you know, by the end of this month, let's put it that way, the plan's okay. safe. 
And Mike, can you ballpark me on the percentage or dollar amount you know, for the special allocation? I do have a department meeting later today and I'd like to be able to at least give them something at a high level. Yeah. Um, no, we looked at it last month. I mean, I'll email you afterwards, but it was in the, uh, there was a worksheet in the uh, package last month, but I'll, uh, I'll go back to that. I'll get that to you after my other, my next meeting. Okay. Yeah, thank you. If you can copy, copy me as well, this is Mark. Yep. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. No problem. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Hearing none. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Thanks, Harry. Second. Uh, thanks, Mark. I'll put Mark down for that one. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Uh, Motion is adjourned. Our right, meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank okay. you. Stay well. Take care.